But yeah, in the future, definitely want to have gnomes in first. And that 20k is probably going to get stack, stack wiped. Now this is really going to be quality plus some numbers versus numbers. Probably one of the best armies in the game at the moment would be Gnomish Hierarchy. Oh yeah, Colonial. This is also going to be a very much Colonial War with Ambrostrond versus Nomada. And Bjornrik has got armies out here. Bjornrik seizing the initiative at sea also means that Nomish Hierarchy cannot reinforce Nomada. And I have a bad feeling that this war is going to be over Nomada and Nomada is going to disappear. And Ambrostrond will get just bigger. Like, this was always going to be a big cause of conflict between these two. Meanwhile, the Arboran war has peaced out. Arboran has broken the alliance between uh, Gnomish Hierarchy and Small Country because of the refused uh, call to arms. Though, how did Arboran declare war on Gnomish Hierarchy? I should have checked that when it happened. Because weren't these two already at war? Wasn't there a truce? Because Gnomish Hierarchy was on small countryside. Oh, that might only have been against uh, these guys. So, small country and the Gnomish Hierarchy moving out. I would be letting most of the sieging be done by small country. They're mercenaries of manpower that you can afford. The gnomes have a hard time getting manpower back. You don't want to be sitting here with a 60k stack, taking 4.2% attrition on troops that you're going to struggle to replace. Wait, you haven't been drilling? Why haven't you been drilling? You have not been drilling at all. That's another mistake. Placeless. Oh dear. That's another thing you kind of want to be doing with the gnomes is constantly drilling so you can get that professionalism up. Like, your only advantage is the quality of the army. They're talking about Arboran's potential rule break, salt guy just being salty. Ah, okay. Because, yeah, that definitely feels like that was a truce break war. So I thought this was actually a pretty smart attack by Bjornrik, but that one battle has just proven the difference in quality here. Um, so he does still have a lot of manpower. That's definitely on his side. He's got a decent amount of money. But this is going to be the Gnomish Hierarchy's opportunity to connect their territories, potentially. Small country fighting against Westmore's army. Bjornrik not coming in to assist. And that's a stack wipe of Westmore. <clears throat> oh, and Cardi is still in the war. Wait. Who are you fighting? Arboran is still in this war. And Arboran is now also fighting Boiscarvo. Boiscarvo humiliation of Arboran. They're just humiliating everyone they possibly can. They just want to fight people, I guess. Trying to get army tradition. And the Arborani conquest of Kudoran. Kudoran being there. Arboran? How? Oh, you have a claim on all of this. Probably part of your mission tree. That's how. I was going to say, because there's no way in hell you can call this. But if you have a claim on it, you can just declare on it. 
But it's the potential truce break, because I'm fairly sure that these two should have had a truce. Because Gnomish Hierarchy has been small country's ally forever. Oh, and here we go. Arboran is attacking in the south. We've got the Gnomish Hierarchy coming in. 53,000 versus 67,000. Gnomish Hierarchy, however, taking an absolute pasting. These are artificers. Arboran's army is just better. 5.3 morale against 4.0. Oof. And... Hierarchy's army sent packing. Meanwhile, small country is facing off against Bjarnric. Because these two are not fighting alongside each other at the moment. He kind of needs small country's superior firepower with... Sorry, you need Gnomish Hierarchy superior firepower with small country's manpower support. Karuvia and Marhold are in a player war again. We'll check that in a second. I thought we were out of the player war era, but apparently we're not. It's 150 against 112, but Bjornrik just has the morale advantage here. Are you guys behind in Miltech? Is, is that what's happening here? Miltech 13, Miltech 13, 13, 13. No, you're all the same. Necliff, meanwhile, is attacking into small country. So who's Karuvia fighting now? Karuvia is also against Boyce Carbo. Right, because this is the Arboran alliance chain, which is Arboran, Karuvia, Jabird, Marhold, mm, Vern. And this time, it's going to be colonial. And you are fighting against Wyvern's Bay. So Vern's forces can actually get to you. So you're fighting against Chiptooth and Bardsword, which is the Boyce Carvo Conquest. Fine. Boyce Carvo Conquest of Echnobit. Fine. And then this weird-ass war. Yeah, it must just be because he's trying to get army traditions. The only reason I can think of... Who are the big players at the moment? So, Soljusit, which are the Lake Fed over there. Phoenix Empire, Eberthil, plus colonies. Uh, Yordland, which are these guys. Uh, Rubinet, which is Nouveau Laurent. Boris Carvo, which is I'm going to attack everyone guy. Bjornric, the Vikings, and then Vern, the Emperor of Ambanar. Although, nobody is voting for Vern. Oh, we have the Religious League. Has spawned. So the Coronites are Vern, Esthil, Luciand, Istralor, Gilane, Elnor, Sugumba, Sestriand, Tellum, Moonhaven, Aranan, Counts League, Corintar, Severdeer, and Anbanland. And then the Regent League side. Actually fairly substantial. Adenica, Silverforge... Bissan, Hammerhome, Order Adresia, Tur, Lespar, Woodwall, Dame's Crown, Wesdam, Estalen, Vertesk, Nushire, Rosand, Coverblad, and Crothen. Which is actually a whole bunch of the former adventurer people. Yeah, it's all of these guys that never went Coronite. Well, that's interesting. Abathil's gone Coronite as well, belatedly. Meanwhile, uh, Bjornrik's backed off to Westmoor. We have Arboran making some incursions. Now, how is the Gnomish defense line? You've got a fort there, you got a fort there, fort there, and fort there. You don't have anything in the Shattered Bay. You have a fort here, which is probably one of the most strategic locations you can have a fort. And then nothing really back until you get to the capital. So if you lose Fodimad, that's going to be very, very bad, and that is exactly what Arboran is going for right now. And fort up here, fort here. 
Okay, so Nomish Hierarchy does have a decent number of fortifications. Small Country does as well. I can see that they've been establishing quite a few. And then Rubenera is now eating up Laurent. This might well be it for Laurent. Then we might well see Rubenera flip to Laurent if they are able to do so. Form Laurent, they can. Laurentan will become the new capital. Country changes to Laurent, you get new missions. Permanent claim on Lensenor. And you get centralization. And then you also get the Laurentish mission tree. Trying to see if you have any permanent buffs. Not really. Except for the cross guard. You probably do want to try and get cross guard before you form Laurent. Which needs this line and this line. Are you actually going to be able to do these? I have a feeling this is going after the halflings. Acrimpton and Dame's Cross. Dame's Cross. Oh, it's down there? Really? For Ruben Air? Alright. And that's taking over all of this. So they'd have to go after Conwell. Yeah, this is basically taking over this whole region too. And I'm guessing that this is taking over this. So this is basically saying that Ruben Air wants to become ruler of this. Minus possibly Anden cost. Yeah, they basically want to take over the neck. Meanwhile, we have another battle coming in. Small country is coming in against Bjornrik, attacking into the Bleak Pass fort. Not entirely sure why they're going on the offensive. Minus one for the small country. Bjornrik is holding pretty well. I don't know where the Gnomish Hierarchy troops are, because they are certainly not up there. Meanwhile, Fodimad has fallen. Gnomish Hierarchy forces once again sent packing. And unfortunately, I think this might well be the end of the Gnomish Hierarchy, because Small Country here is getting busted up because they are not fighting together at all. Like, you've got to play to the Gnomish Hierarchy's strengths. And that's their firepower. And they're just not. What's the difference between Laurent and Rubenair? So Rubenair would basically be like Orléans or Provence, whereas Laurent is France. And Boris Carvo is coming in with additional reinforcements, another 80,000 troops, because Nomish Hierarchy lost the naval war early on. And despite the small country just having significantly more troops, they're just getting annihilated. And yeah, the... The Bjornrik naval blockade is pretty strong, although they're not actually blockading, which is something I would probably do. Park your heavy ships outside of the Gnomish Hierarchy's port, and then put all of your light ships just blockading the rest for the extra war score and economic damage and devastation you can inflict. Meanwhile, Nomada has actually taken over Ambastond. I was wrong on that. Although it'd be very easy for Bjarnrek just to sail more troops over because naval superiority. Meanwhile, Bois Carvo is only in the Arboran War. They've pieced out of the other one. Bois Carvo's fighting Arboran. But it was Boris Carvo armies we saw here, wasn't it? Are they... They flip sides. Right? So, but... They're not... Huh? <laughs> they're not hostile to Bjarnrik, but they are hostile to Arboran. So why are their troops up here facing off against Bjarnrik? 
Oh, they're retaking the fort which Arboran took. They declared on Arboran after they attacked the gnomes. Okay. So yeah, I guess that Boris Carver just wants to fight. More bobs fallen. These guys will be able to backfill Kadoran, though they may as well just take the gnomish capital region. And ha uh, like Vern doing anything? No. Rubenair's not. Conwell's not. Marhold. You guys are also in the Bias Carvo war. But not actually doing anything. Same with Karuvia. Meanwhile, we've got Arboran moving into Fodimad. We've got Bias Carvo coming in to assist. We've got Small country, sorry, yeah, small country up there. Gnomish hierarchy, not participating. Faceless, you've got to do something here. Unfortunately, you've lost mana, so you can't cross the straits anymore. So they're not actually blocking the straits. You'd be able to get through there if you wanted to. Meanwhile, Arboran fighting against Boris Carvo, 5.3. Morale against 4.5. We've got the small country coming in and dribs and drabs trying to support. However, we've got Bjarnrik also... Trying to have a piece of the pie, although not actually, I think, actively joining the fight. No, they are just sieging. While the battle is going on, in their faces, small country with 70,000 men, but they're going to be joining that fight way too late. And then it's basically going to be, who knows whether they fight Bjornrik or Arboran. They could, they could fight either. They could fight both. They could fight neither. And there we go. Small country now fighting against Bjornrik, while Arboran looks on, bemused. Arboran, meanwhile, moving out to go and attack Small Country's reinforcements, because they might as well. Small Country is just... completely... divided... right now. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Let's switch over to the Small Country so we can actually see this battle going on. Small Country reinforcements are available. Arboran... is not at war with the Small Country. Right, because the small country rejected the call to arms. And the gnomes have unconditional. Yes, they have. Riveria was released. By... Arboran? Yes. I... Huh? <laughs> Is this to try and provoke Rubenair into taking Reveria? Provoking them to fight the gnomes or the halflings to do so? Meanwhile, the gnomes are still very much in the war against Bjornrik. And their armies are marching north to come and assist the small country. Well, Bjornrik is still fighting up north. Nothing has changed up here. Unless gnomish hierarchy is like paying trade to Arboran or something now. Nope. How are you a march? What? Oh no, and Cardi is your march. Yeah, you're still a monarchy. You're not actually a march. A march is simply a, a border region, effectively, and that's exactly what Arboran is. So, small country looks like they were defeated by... Bjarnrik. It looks like Boiscarvo has pieced out. Ambustrand is still under occupation, although they have just defeated the Nomada's army and are starting to retake things back again, although there are rebels over here. 
Well, Scarbo is now at peace, which means that the big chunk of the world that was fighting against Boy Scarvo is at peace. Guessing that was another white piece as opposed to anything actually happening. Meanwhile, we have the Gnomish Hierarchy moving in to attack Bjarnrek. We've got small countries supporting them. See, this is what they needed to do. Let the gnomes get into the fight first. Let them do the damage and then have the small country coming in to reinforce them with the extra morale. And I think that this fight is going to go very much in the Gnomish Hierarchy's favour. Once we get to it. Because things are moving quite slowly. Any minute now. Eleven days. Nine days. Six days. Although the gnomes will have a minus one because they're attacking. There it is. Small country arrive first. Damn it. Which means, again, the back line's not going to have any artillery and the small country's going to get decimated. And they are. You don't get there until the first. You don't even arrive in time. There they are. Now you've got a proper lion, and there we go. Bjarnrik starts suffering some really bad casualties. But I have a really bad feeling it's too little too late because the morale damage has been done. Communication between Faceless and Arkmill is not the greatest. Ooh, we've got Cold Rage fighting someone. Who's that gonna be? Cryonvar. Oh dear. I think Cold Rage might be about to die. Let's go and see what's happening over there. Yeah. Cryonvar has finally decided, Cold Rage, you have not allied with us. You have not accepted any of our diplomatic overtures. You're going to die now. Um, so this is... <laughs> there's nothing Cold Rage can do here. He has no player allies. He's already busy fighting against our Dodston. Cryonvar's just chosen the moment and attacked. Rip the gobos. Indeed, so weirdly... And I hate saying this... The master of the Dwarven Tunnels. It's got to be the elves. That feels wrong. That feels wrong on so many different levels. Meanwhile, Ard Odston is being occupied by Harris Odom. You Ram Dwarves just getting no opportunities here. Uh, soldier Stat has come in to try and bail them out against the AI. Oslo Azdir and Kugdir allied against Harrod Odom and Karak Dumvor. And this is a fight that has been almost entirely done by the <laughs> Lake Federation, who is currently sitting on Krakdumvor's capital. Well, unfortunately, Tanya watches her entire nation just under occupation by the other dwarves. And Bjarnrik won the fight, which they had ed every reason to lose. No much hierarchy, you're even in a golden era. Lost 12,000. You two have got to communicate better. Gnomes in first. Halflings of support. Let the gnomish artillery sit in the back line for the entire damn battle. Which is now making me realise just how dangerous. Oh my gosh. You know what? The, the most dangerous alliance in this game would be Small Country and Ovdal Kanzad. Because Ovdal Kanzad's infantry is alright, but their artillery is enormously amazing. So if you get Ovdal Kanzad joining the battle first, getting their incredible artillery in the back line just established, and just keep on feeding in the halflings and their mercenaries. And they're all infantry, so they're just going to keep on coming. And that ridiculous dwarven artillery is just going to sit in the back line because they do not retreat. Do the gnomes have a high maneuver general and they just aren't accounting for it? You mean the halflings? Because the gnomes don't have an admiral. Have no maneuver whatsoever. 
Halflings. <laughs> yeah, you're right, actually. <laughs>